So YouTube, team keep it clean. You know draft time is right around the corner. And what better way to talk about some of the potential draft picks that the Ravens could choose from when it comes to the cornerback position. Some different mock drafts have had some different guys mocked to Baltimore. And we'll, of course, see what happens in the future. But to put us on, to let us know, to give us the details about some of the top cornerbacks in the draft, I brought on a special guest. Let me introduce him. So team, keep it clean. We've got a very special guest in the building. This is Chris, just joking. Um, so Chris, just to get straight into it, how did you become a Ravens fan? Uh, it actually started when I was in high school. Uh, I was playing football and uh, I made a move. I used to play corner and then I wanted to make the move to safety because uh, I like Bob Sanders a lot. And then my coach was like, you got to watch Ed Reed. <laughs> so I started Smart. watching Ed Reed. This was about 2002. Mm -hmm. So um, I started watching Ed Reed, and I, I fell in love with the team. And mm -hmm. and then they got Dion, who was my favorite player, which was the reason why I played corner all through Pop Warner was because of Dion. Mm -hmm. So once they got Dion, I was like, all right, this is match made in heaven, and been here <laughs> ever since. Yeah, man, I remember that, and that's that's the year he wore uh, 37 because I think he was 37 years old. He was 37 years old, yep. Yeah, and Bob Sanders, man, I remember him. Bob Sanders was physical, physical safety. I just hated that um, injuries just killed his career. Quick. Yeah, man, he, he's probably one of the most impactful players ever in the NFL because when you remember those Colts teams, when he wasn't on the field, they were terrible. Mm -hmm. Then when he was on the field, it was like a completely different squad. So yeah, he, man. He's one, one of those dudes that I, I've always loved. All right, well, shout out to your coach, man, for putting you on the air. Reed oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Shout out to Coach Khalil. <laughs> <laughs> He's smart, man, because he, he picked the right one. Yeah, that's um, for sure. Because if he would have said Polo Malu, I might have been Pittsburgh. <laughs> 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 Ain't lying, but it's all good. It worked out. Now, um, sure. you, you, you love talking football. Uh, you love talking football so much that you got your own podcast, The Deep Cover Pod. Tell, tell us about that. Oh, yeah. Deep Cover Podcast. That's um, with my boys, uh, Michael Crawford, uh, at Albuquerque on Twitter, and mm -hmm. uh, Kerry Stevenson as well. Uh, both great guys. And it is just something that happened organically. You know, like we weren't like, let's start a podcast. It was just we spoke on the phone. Mm -hmm. And the, I think it lasted like two or three hours, the phone call. We didn't record anything. We just talked, all three of us. Yeah, and we were like, like we should have recorded this. <laughs> and that was in 20 summer of 2019 and you know okay. we're still here going strong and and you know i, I love those guys because it's more than football with them like like we talk mm -hmm. about life we talk more about life than we do football to be honest yeah so, um yeah so shout out to those guys man those are two two really great guys who, who make me better oh yeah for sure that's what it's about too because football in football uh it has a lot of life lessons in there because, of course, you could talk about different coverages and different players and execution and this coach and that. You can talk about all that stuff. Um, but there's so many valuable lessons that you could talk about within the game, too. Uh, oh, yeah. So it's always important to keep that in the perspective. Mm -hmm. um, now, let, let everybody know where they can find the podcast and also where they can find you at, too. Uh, so for me, you can find me on Twitter at Chris Just Joking. Uh, the Deep Cover Pod, that's exactly what it is on Twitter, at Deep Cover Pod. Uh, you can find us. Uh, we just dropped an episode uh, yesterday where we do a, a recap of free agency with uh, the cap guru, Brian McFarlane. If you know if you know about Ravens football, you know, Brian McFarlane, that's <laughs> that's the go to guy. That's the wizard. So we really just did a, a really fun episode that's like about two hours long. And uh, it, it was fun to do. And that dude just he put down a lot of knowledge. So if you want to get familiar with free agency and, and who the Ravens can sign and who they can keep listen to that please all right cool so what i do uh to make it easy for y'all i just leave the link to that right down below in the description so you ain't even got to do no work so uh a lot of talk has been about the cornerback position right now we got marlon humphrey of course coming back from injury marcus peters coming back from injury chris westry who had been hurt early in the season but he finished out healthy uh anthony averett he's coming back from injury but he might not even be coming back uh, Tavon Young, he finished the season, which was good. Uh, Jimmy Smith, he had been hurt throughout, but it's probably looking like he's on his way to retirement. Uh, they did bring back, they signed Kevon Seymour to a future reserve deal. Uh, so basically, with all that being said, there's a lot of questions at the cornerback position. 
Yeah. Um, so you have some young studs coming out. Uh, of course, Sauce is the he's been the talk of the town. A lot of Ravens fans be like Sauce Gardner, Sauce Gardner, Sauce Gardner. <laughs> Um, but tell us about Sauce Gardner. Let, let's just start with him. Tell us what would be some good reasons on why the Ravens should draft Sauce. What are some some good attributes that he has, some good qualities about him? Well, first of all, we got to start off with the name. I mean, Sauce. <laughs> Come on. Like, you, you're not going to beat that name. You know, Sauce. Like, that. that's just – it takes me back to, to M1 with hot sauce. And oh, everybody hot loves sauce, hot yeah. sauce. So, it's just Sauce. So, that that's number one. And then he has the attitude on the field to go with that name. Mm. He he's not a, a shy guy when it comes to physicality or contact. Mm. And mm. you know you see that a lot because people will look at his frame. He's six three, you know, kind of a wiry guy, really tall and lanky. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people just throw that label on him that he he's not scared to tackle. And but that's not the case. He will mm. get in there and get his his nose dirty. So that's one thing you know Ravens like. Uh, we, we've seen that be a consistent thing with the cornerbacks that they drafted over the years. They mm -hmm. like guys who can be physical. And he's long. Like, that's probably one of his best attributes is how long his limbs are. Like, he's not the fastest guy in the world, mm -hmm. but his length, he can recover and close windows to make – the quarterback has to make a precise throw in order to get it in there because he's so long. And then he doesn't panic either. He's not a guy who will panic. We've seen our cornerbacks sometimes, Marlon Humphrey, Anthony Averitt, when their back is towards the ball, they'll panic. Mm. Sauce is a cool customer. He's going to keep his cool and wait till that last moment to turn his head and knock the ball away. So he he's a guy. He has a lot of good ball production. Um, they didn't really throw his way. His quarterbacks were really scared to throw his way when you watch the tape. But uh, he, he's a guy that is very intriguing. So. So Sauce is definitely one of the, the best corners in this in this draft. OK, now with him, is he somebody that really jumped out this last season or has he been progressively building up to this? How, how has his track his track record been? So last year, uh, teams, were, they kind of went at him a little bit more last year, but he didn't have a bad season. There were some things on tape that weren't as clean. But uh, I think coming into this 2021 season, he cleaned up a lot of those uh, those technical issues just as far as his footwork. I think his footwork is leaps and bounds better this past season than it was his sophomore year. Mm -hmm. His sophomore year, he was kind of a little clunky and, you know, I mean, th that kid's still growing. So sometimes you still got to you got to grow into that body a little bit. Mm -hmm. And his footwork wasn't really all there in 2020. But 2021, that stuff really cleaned up. And, and he not to knock him, he was good in 2020. But 2021, he just he went to that next level yeah and that's always good to hear yeah. now how would he fit in with the ravens would he be more of an outside corner or is he able to play the slot i know a six three playing slot would be kind of different but what can he do as far as that where, where would he be utilized best at uh, i would say put him on the outside because i and the, the inside it was there was a tape on 2020 against um i believe it was memphis against uh this other cat calvin austin jr who was he was lighting dudes up at the senior bowl this past year. Mm -hmm. And um Sauce had his hands full with that guy. He's like 5'8, uh, buck 65. And we've we saw it with Marlon when Marlon was trying to line up against Tyler Lockett a few years Ooh. ago, I think in 2019. <laughs> and we saw Marlon had his hands full. So, you know, he's not you sauce, you don't want to put him against those smaller dudes because mm -hmm. they they'll just, you know, they they'll route you up. But you know, Mike Ever the Mike uh, Evans, the uh there was uh, Higgins, you know, those mm -hmm. bigger, bigger receivers on the outside. Those are the ones that you want sauce to go up against. He relishes that, that physical contact and, and just having those boxing matches, you know, when it comes to hand fighting with the wide receivers and stuff, he loves that, that physicality. Mm. And that's something to think about when you got guys like right there within a the division, like you mentioned the T Higgins, uh, when you think about the Pittsburgh Steelers, uh, they got Chase Claypool, um, and with the Browns, they we'll see what they got because they got rid of Odell and Jarvis Landry. He about to be out of there too, so we'll see yeah. what happens. Now you talked about the good with Sauce. What about the bad? What what does he struggle with? I and mean, you did mention how he struggles with the smaller receivers, but what else does he struggle with? Um, I, I think one of the concerns, and it's a legitimate concern, is the long speed that he has. Um, mm -hmm. He doesn't look like the fastest guy. We've know we've seen cornerbacks like Richard Sherman come in, and you know their speed not really be a problem. But uh, I would say that's one of the, the main factors. And then also the, the footwork sometimes. 
like I said, going up against those quicker wide receivers, he's not going to have that kind of footwork that you see from like a Darius Slay, for example. It's mm-hmm. kind of unfair to, to compare him to a guy that's been in the Pro Bowl, but he, he's, I don't think he's ever going to be one of those guys that's just going to be able to line up everywhere and be able to keep up with any kind of receiver. Hmm. Okay. And if, not to put you on the spot, but if you had an NFL comparison for him, who would that be? What cornerback would you compare him to that's in the league right now? Um, Right now, see, I had a, a, a throwback one. Oh, that's oh, fine too. One. It was uh, uh, Jonathan Banks, uh, dude from Mississippi State. He was with the, the Bucks for a little while. Um, I actually, I have another one that's that's a little bit uh, closer. Cam Cam Dantzler, the uh, another Mississippi State guy. He played for the Vikings, and uh, he's another tall, lanky, skinny guy, but mm-hmm. physical, physical. He's not a, a soft corner at all. But uh, I, I I believe Sauce is better than those two guys. But just as far as the physical ability mm-hmm. and uh, the willingness to be to be a, a part of the the stopping the run. I, I think he could, he's better than those guys. Now, do you think, I know we're a ways away, about two months away, but do you think it's a possibility that he could actually be there for the Ravens to grab him at 14? Um, right now, I'll probably say like 80% no, 20% yes, <laughs> okay. because, you know, a lot of these mocks that are coming out. Now, the, this is the big part. The next week, we have the, the combine coming up. Oh, uh, yeah, that changes a lot. So we could see a lot of movement within the next week. But right now in the mock drafts that we see, he's going top 10. You know, you see him being pretty much being either the first or second corner in a lot of these mock drafts. Um, but that that combine, that could change a lot. Yeah, that's true. Man. All right. So we talked about sauce. Uh, another cornerback that has been getting a lot of buzz has been Stingley. How should we feel about him? What 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 are his good, his bad? What's the rundown on him? So Derek Stingley, he was like the Jamar Chase of cornerbacks his freshman oh. year because everybody remembers the year Jamar Chase had that that uh, national championship year with Joe Burrow. But on the other side of the ball, Stingley was a true freshman doing spectacular things on the defensive side of the ball. Mm. And uh, he went back to school. You know, Chase sat out the COVID year and then he decided to come back, go into the NFL draft. Stingley came back the COVID year, played, dealt with some injuries, and then he, he came back for his junior year, played, and dealt with some injuries yet again. But that 2019 tape is what has everybody so high on him. And it's difficult to question that because he was going up against upper echelon wide receivers as a true freshman and mm-hmm. stopping them. Nope. So that, that dude, and he's a guy... I think he's going to blow up the combine because if you look up his high school numbers, mm-hmm. when he went to the Nike camp, he blew it out the water. He was running a four three four in high school. Mm. Now that's that that that's insane. So yeah. <laughs> he, he's going to blow it up. He's going to blow up the combine. Now doesn't doesn't he have somewhat of an injury history over the he past does. couple of years? Yeah, yeah. Over the past years, he, he's had some some foot injuries. Um, this past season, he had a foot injury. Uh, but from all all reports, everything says he's healthy, he's good to go, and uh, he he's going to be at the combine. So uh, it looks like every all systems go for him. So do you feel like uh, do you feel like that he'll still he's still still be a first round pick given the injuries oh, yeah. history? Yeah, I think I think for sure he'll be a first round pick. I, I think he'll be a top top fifteen guy if he doesn't go into top ten. I think he could be a, a top fifteen guy. If he had just clean injury history, um, I would say he's definitely a top 10 guy. But Ooh. with the medicals, you never know. You know, I would, there, uh, Aziz Ojolari, he was a pass rusher last year with the, the uh, Georgia Bulldogs. And it looked like he was a top 15 guy. And then you see him slip out of the first round. And the reason that was was because some knee issues that he had mm. in high school. So... Mm. You never know when it comes to these medicals, but just based on mm-hmm. pure talent, he's a top fifteen dude. Oh, I love it. All right, and, and what what are his what does he struggle with? What are his issues that he has? So with him, this past year it was weird. Uh, the whole LSU program was just weird. It seems like once Burrow and 
Jefferson and Jamar, once they left, it just seemed like there was a black cloud over that whole program. Mm. And it kind of you see you saw it in Stingley's play, too. There were times where there were just miscommunications on the back end. It was very Ravens like where <laughs> it just didn't make sense. You're like, what are you guys doing? You know, <laughs> so it, it, you saw you saw a bit of a drop off in play. Now, mm. is that is that him just kind of checking out and like, you know what? Let me just save myself and not try to get hurt. Is he playing not to get hurt? Mm-hmm. You know, because you, you do mm-hmm. see that a lot in college where guys are like, this team is just not good. And I'm the only one really trying to put up any kind of fight. Mm-hmm. But if I'm the only one putting up this fight, I'm not going to sacrifice myself when everybody else is lollygagging. So that could be it. I'm not trying to make any excuses for him. I'm just trying yeah. to look for all all kinds of angles but i i just personally i don't think that talent that he has i don't think that just goes away mm. on his own you know? okay but yeah he, he's definitely one of the most intriguing guys in this draft not even cornerback just overall player and yeah, okay and, and with our secondary uh where would you fit him in it i think he's a guy you would want to line him up on the outside but i think he has the quickness to be one of those guys who can follow all over mm-hmm. the field uh he's he's six one uh, he, he's a, a slim guy. He's like 190, 195. But uh, his movement skills are, he's like a cat out there. You know, he he's a guy who could change directions quickly. He could play the, the slot. Mm-hmm. He could play the outside. He can be physical. And he, he just, he's the total package. He has the ball skills to go up and get the interceptions, which is something that the Ravens need a lot. So, uh, yeah, he, he's a guy that I, I think can truly develop and be one of those do-it-all cornerbacks. Mm. Now, you mentioned uh, the ball skills, um, something that the Ravens seem to be lacking a bit. And of course, with Marcus Peters being out, it was more evident than ever. Yeah. Um, just to switch gears a little bit uh, to go get on the Ravens, what do you feel like their secondary could use more of in addition to more ball skills and obviously health? Yeah, so I, I think obviously Marcus Peters coming back. That's going to be huge. You know, I mean, we saw his impact just with him being on the sideline during the Rams game. So (laughs) imagine him on the field. So we need him back ASAP. But I just I think they just need more cohesion, man. There was too that secondary is too talented for them to be having, you know, these like high school like miscues Mm -hmm. on the back end of the defense because there shouldn't be guys running free. It seemed like it was happening two, three times a game. That's that's unacceptable for guys that are that talented. But uh, I do think they need to add a safety. Obviously, another corner would, you know, high end corner with a premium pick, whether it's a first, second or third round pick. Mm-hmm. I think safety and a, a premium corner. I think, you know, now now you're really cooking with the, the vets that you already have on this team. And um, before we move on, any thoughts on uh, Mike McDonald? on what you expect from him. Because I feel like one of the uh, biggest issues with the Ravens last year obviously was injuries, but I feel like a lot of it was scheme too. Well, how do you feel about Mike McDonald moving forward as a defensive coordinator? Um, it, it's going to be interesting to see. Um, I, I do think we're not going to be seeing a lot of those, you know, zero blitzes <laughs> that we saw. I, I don't think we're going to do that. What I do think we will see is a more cohesive unit. Okay. Uh, when you look at Michigan, they played – you know, a lot of people want to say, oh, they had Hutchison. Oh, they had Ojabo. They had Daxton Hill. And it's like, yeah, but you still got to make those things work. You know, there, there are a lot of teams in college football that have talent and we see it not work. But he made it work. And you don't see a lot of blown coverages. You see, mm-hmm. you know, players keeping things in front of them, everybody rallying to the ball. I think with the Ravens, what we saw was a lot of hero ball, a lot of trying to do the other guy's job when you should just mm-hmm. focus on your job. And then trust the player next to you to do his job. So I just think trust, discipline, cohesion. If we have that, I, I think it's going to be a good season for them. But just just limit the big plays. That's yes. that's the main thing. Because this defense, <laughs> the defense wasn't trash. It was just the big plays. Yeah, like, man. Mm. That was painful too, man. Yeah. Especially like as a Ravens fan. Even if you've only been a Ravens fan the past 10 years. And just to see the defense giving that up, the way they were giving it up, it's like, man, who are we watching? Yeah, man. We we, we can't have that, man. They, they got to be on the same page. Play yeah. in, play out consistently. Yeah, that makes sense, man. Now, switching gears back to the uh, cornerbacks. Um, 
who are some names also coming out the draft that Ravens fans should look out for? So my my favorite cornerback in this draft. Now, when I say favorite, I don't say the best, but my favorite cornerback is Andrew Booth Jr. from Clemson. Okay. Uh, he's a dude. He, he's a guy. You watch him, you could feel his energy on the field. Like he's getting other dudes pumped up, and he's like, if somebody makes a play, he's going over. He's the first guy over to congratulate his teammates. Now that's just a small thing, mm-hmm. but that's what you want to see. You want to see somebody that's that's hyper to play this game. You want to see somebody that's happy to see his teammates make a play. Mm-hmm. And now when well, we go to his play, he's another guy with those cat-like reflexes. And if you just YouTube some of his highlights for anybody watching this, you'll see some amazing catches that you won't even see some wide receivers make. He got <laughs> one-handed catches. And, uh, you know, he, he's a guy that I, I really do like his, his style of play. And, and I think he has that mentality that Ravens mentality because in the run game, he throws his body around like he's a crash test dummy. Like he has no regard for his body and he's running up there and he's taking dudes legs out and, and he's getting, he's getting nasty. He's throwing wide receivers to the side that are trying to, trying to block him. So uh, at man coverage, his man coverage skills are, are very, very good. He's a sticky guy in coverage. So he, he's, he's definitely one of my favorites. Hmm. Well, that sounds good. Now, is he expected to go in the first round as well? He is. He is. Uh, in a lot of mock drafts, you would see him going within the top 12 picks. Uh, mm-hmm. Now, I, for whatever reason, you see him going in uh, mid first round a little mm-hmm. bit. Uh, but we'll see. But he's he's definitely a first rounder. OK. All right. Sounds good. So Ravens, uh, they well, they may have their options. It's possible that all three could be going. It's possible that maybe one or two may be there at 14. If the Ravens know. are, yeah, exactly. If the Ravens are even there uh, at 14, because, you know, yeah. they like moving back and getting even more <laughs> draft picks. And they, yeah. they, they love the draft picks. Yeah. Um, now, you talked about how uh, possibly drafting the corner, but also drafting the safety. Mm-hmm. Now, the name we've been hearing so much, of course, is Kyle Hamilton. Um, everybody loves Kyle Hamilton, but what is it that makes him so special? He can do it all. Hmm. He can do it all. He can play man. He can play deep. He can line up in the box. He's like a the, the queen chess piece on a, hmm. on the football field. It's like, oh, we need to stop this tight end. Put him on him. Oh, we need to stop this wide receiver. Put him on him. That's what that's how Notre Dame used him. And his closing speed, there are angles that he he just erases. It doesn't even look real on some of them. There was a play, I forget against who, and uh it was like a fourth and one. And it looked like the running back had it, and he just erased the angle right away and stopped it for a loss. And I was like, mm. Well, is this dude human? You know, <laughs> he he might be the he might be the most talented player in the draft. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. that's some high praise because I've heard nothing but good stuff about him. Um, yeah, I got to take a look at myself. Now, there, there's another safety. I want to say it's Braxton Hill. No, not Braxton. Is oh, Daxton. Daxton. Daxton Hill. Hill. Okay, there we go. Yeah. T- tell us a little bit about him. So, Daxton Hill, that's uh, that's actually Justice Hill's little brother. Oh, really? So, yeah, that's his little brother. Well, his <laughs> little big brother because he's bigger than uh, Justice. <laughs> But uh, he he's another one of those guys. He's one of my favorite players in this draft too. Mm-hmm. Uh, he he's a smaller guy. Like he's he's six one, uh, like five eleven, like one ninety ish. But um, he man, he flies around. He he kind of reminds me of a little bit the way that the Ravens would use uh, Ladarius Webb in the slot, mm, okay. where they would send him out on the blitz. They would just have Webby around the ball all the time. He's a guy that's sticky in coverage. But I also think this is a projection now. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he could play deep safety. Uh, just watching him and the way he reads and reacts in zones and just the way his, his feet and hips are, are able to change direction so quickly, I do think he's a guy that could play that back end and, and do it very well. And, you know, that's one of Mike McDonald's guys. So he knows how mm-hmm. to use him better than anybody else. And I think the way Mike McDonald used him, he just wanted him around the line of scrimmage. He wanted him around the ball because he's a playmaker and he's a guy that's going to get his nose dirty. He's going to do the dirty work. He's going to create turnovers. And, you know, somebody like that, that that would be really, really exciting for for the Ravens to have. 
Hmm. Okay. So we'll see how it goes. Now, before we get out of here, do you have any of your own projections on what you think the Ravens are going to do at 14? We know there's, there's six other rounds, but yeah. – you know, the first round draft pick, that's the sexy pick. That's the one that oh, everybody's yeah. watching. Oh, yeah. It's got the coverage on ESPN and all that. Yeah. What do you think the Ravens do at 14? Even if it's not a particular player, if it is even better, cool. But if it's not, yeah. that's fine too. If it's just a position, what, what do you think the Ravens do at 14? I, I personally think it's going to end up being an edge player. Oh. Um, the edge class is ridiculous as far as depth and talent. Mm-hmm. There are maybe like five guys who could go – in the top 15 picks, five edge defenders. Um, one of the ones that I have my eye on who would probably right now be, you know, probably I don't I don't have a, a favorite just yet because it's still, you know, we're in, we're in February, about to be March next week. So everything mm-hmm. changes. But uh, Trayvon Walker is a guy that I like a lot. Uh, he's a pass rusher out of Georgia. Just won the national championship. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's a dude. He's a guy. Just think. Zadarius Smith, okay, but with a jetpack on his back. <laughs> that's that's how he. That's the best way to describe him. And he's just a violent, violent dude. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he, there's just things that he does on the field where he makes 300 pound offensive linemen look like little boys out there. Mm-hmm. And he's grown man strong. He could play on the inside. He could play on the on the outside too. He's kind of like Jadavion Clowney in that way, where mm-hmm. he could move all over the place and mm. once he gets it clicking on the edge because right now on the inside inside he's a, a, a absolute terror but on the outside he still needs a little bit of that development because at georgia they don't really let you pin your ears back and go get the quarterback like we mm. saw jermaine johnson he was in georgia last year he had a, a good season but then he transferred to fsu and he blows up and he has 10 plus sacks because lsu is like look go hunt do what you got to do but at Georgia, they kind of subdue you a little bit, and you have to play that team defense. And you know, you you got to go occupy this gap and let you know your your teammate stun around and get the sack. So sometimes your numbers aren't as inflated if you go to a different program. Oh, okay. So maybe with a different program, we see more of that edge prowess from Trayvon Walker. But I think that's something that he could develop with a, a couple years in the league. And and uh, a guy that he's getting some comparisons to is uh, Rashawn Gary. From uh, oh, from Green the Packers, Bay. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and we've okay. seen Rashawn Gary in year three, the light really turn on and him become one of the leaders of that defense. Oh yeah, for sure, man. But I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate oh, you being able to break down all these different prospects. Uh, appreciate your expertise uh, oh, in the draft. You, oh no, no problem, man. And I, I do for sure, and I'm not just saying this just to say it, because this, this will be in the video, so it, I got to make it happen. I, I do I do want you uh, to come through again uh, before draft time, even post-draft too, so you could break down some of the players or whatnot, because I, I enjoyed this a lot, man, just hearing you talk about all these different prospects from Saul, and, and talking about the good and the bad too. Right. We ain't just talk about highlights because that, that's why I don't really like watching highlights on people because <laughs> highlights just show, oh, that's a good play. That's great. That's great. Yeah, yeah. But but what do they do bad? And you broke that down, too. So I, I seriously appreciate it. Um, let everybody know where to find you at one more time on Twitter and the podcast and everything. Uh, you can find me at Chris Just Joking on Twitter and uh, you can find a deep, uh, deep cover pod on Twitter as well. All right, cool, man. So again, just to make everything easy, I'll have everything linked in the description so y'all can just click, copy, paste, whatever, uh, so you can be lazy. Anyway, (laughs) team, keep it clean. Appreciate y'all watching. Chris, appreciate you joining. I hope y'all enjoy. Oh, yeah, for sure, man. And like I said, we have to make this happen again. For For sure. Anytime. Thank you, man. Shout out to Graven.